JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 16th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US, dollar, the US dollar was found lower against all the other major currencies uh, during, the Europe, during the early European morning Thursday. It lost the most ground versus Aussie, the pound and the kiwi, while it underperformed the least against the euro. Now, the weakening of the US dollar combined with the strengthening of the risk-linked excuse me, Aussie and Kiwi suggests that the financial world may have turned to risk on trading yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, major European and US indices traded in the green, with the appetite turning uh, mixed during uh, the, Asia, the Asian session today. Now, European markets uh, may have uh, may have benefited from the ECB's decision to hold an ad hoc gathering to discuss market conditions. This was interpreted as positive as uh, at its prior gathering the bank failed to clearly communicate how they will deal with fragmentation risks when they start raising interest rates. Reversing course in around a week uh, later, the bank said it would direct cash to more in-depth nations from uh, debt maturing and that it would uh, work on a new instrument to prevent an excessive divergence in borrowing costs. That's why we saw the euro recovering ground and European equities rebounding. However, the common currency gave back those gains very soon as ECB President Lagarde said that the ECB's job is taming inflation and not helping budgets. Later in the day, the spotlight turned to the FOMC decision. In line with uh, the market uh, pricing, um, in the aftermath of uh, Friday's data revealing uh, accelerating inflation, the committee raised interest rates by 75 basis points, taking them to the 1.5-1.75% range. The new dot plot was also very close to the path priced in by the financial community. The, made, the, the median dot for 2022 was at 3.4%, up from 1.9%, which implies around 175 basis points more by the end of the year. In other words, as the market has been pricing in, another triple hike uh, is, expect, uh, is expected for July and two more doubles thereafter. For 2023, the median dot was up to 3.8% from 2.8%, su suggesting another 40 basis points during the year, while in 2024 officials saw the rate at 3.4%, down 40 basis points. Initially, the US dollar strengthened on such a, ho on such a hoggish outcome, but it came under selling interest during Chair Powell's press conference. The chief said that they delivered a triple hike due to the upside surprise in inflation, but he added that at the next meeting they may hike either by 50 or 75 basis points depending on incoming data. In our view, this means that a 75 basis points liftoff is not a done deal, as the market pricing has been suggesting, and Maybe that's why we saw the US dollar trading south and finishing lower against every other major currency. However, our view remains the same as ahead of the meeting. We will treat the setback as a corrective move, 
After all, with such a, with, uh, such a decision, the Fed remains at the top of the list with the most hawkish major central banks. Thus, we do see the case for the greenback to reclaim uh, that lost ground soon and against some currencies, maybe even today. One of those currencies may be the British pound, for which we see decent chances uh, for another round of selling in the, aftermath, in the aftermath of today's Bank of England decision. So speaking about the pound in the Bank of England, let's fly to the UK where expectations are for a quarter point liftoff. There is some speculation for a 50 basis points hike, but we see that case as somewhat unlikely. The reason is that since the prior gathering, preliminary GDP data for the first quarter revealed a slowdown, and according to the PMIs, the weakness continued in the second quarter as well, at a time when inflation remained elevated, elevated at 9% year over year. Indeed, on Monday, monthly data revealed a contraction during the month of April. In our view, this, has, this adds credence to officials' concerns over a recession, and although they may continue lifting rates due to the very high inflation, their path may be slower than other major central banks like the Fed and the Bank of Canada. Thus, we believe that officials will hike by only 25 basis points today and repeat their recession warnings, something that may weigh on the British pound. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the, of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.